Hey there, guys. So hopefully you got a chance to see uh, Logan this weekend. We did. Yes. And uh, now we're going to talk about a little bit of spoilers. So I stress, if you have not seen Logan, do not watch this video at no, all. Do not. Do not. Do not at all. So um, <clears throat> what we find out in this movie, and it was kind of set up at the end of X-Men Apocalypse, is that people, this company is using... Uh, Logan Wolverine's DNA to make clones, mm -hmm. uh, mutant clones. One of which being X twenty three Laura Kinney, the little girl who um she stole the whole movie. Really, she stole the show for um, and this is her first movie. Yeah. This is her first movie ever. Off to a good start. Off to a great start. <laughs> Another part of the um, clone plot for the movie is that they create this clone, X-24, who is a complete uh, clone of Wolverine in his younger form. So he, he's not all aged and scarred and stuff. And... Um, it's crazy how a little bit of makeup and some scraggly hair and a beard can make Hugh Jackman look so much older. And then you see him in what he really looks like right now as X-24. It's crazy. He really does look like he's just aging and deteriorating really badly. Um, so let's get to um, the part of the movie that everyone cares about. Who, who dies? Who dies in this movie? <laughs> so, More than you think. So, uh, we'll start with the one that didn't really hit, like, emotionally at all, really. Caliban dies. Um, yeah. He actually has a really nice, cool death scene. He even gets an awesome one-liner. Yeah. He, so, he gets captured by uh, Boyd Holbrook and the rest of the Reavers. And, um, they're basically forcing him to help them find Logan, Charles, and, uh, X-23. And then finally, in the whole part where the crap hits the fan, about halfway through the movie, I think, or two-thirds of the way through, he's finally like, you know what? Screw it. I'm not helping these people anymore. I'm gonna do some good and try and help my friends. He grabs a thing of grenades, he pulls the pins on both of them, and, he, and then um, when, earlier on in the movie, Boyd Holbrook, Holbrook says to him, because uh, Caliban is albino, mm. as he was in the comics as well, so uh, he says, Boyd Holbrook says to him, beware the light, I bet that's what your mom told you as a kid, before uh, shining the sun in his face and burning him very badly. So, um, he, he's holding these grenades that are, he's about to let loose, and he just says, beware the light. And then he lets go of them, and... Pretty awesome moment. Pretty epic. It was a pretty epic moment for a character that got a fair amount of screen time and a fair amount of character. He was also in X-Men Apocalypse that hit me the most. I actually teared up when this happened. Charles Xavier, Professor X, he is killed by X-24. He's stabbed in the heart by X-24 with the claws. And, um, as soon as it happened, I was just like, mm. and yeah. <laughs> I, I just, I started I started breathing heavily, my heartbeat got the whole, faster. The whole time that happened, I was like, oh crap, and then I hear Brandon right next to me, I hear him go... <laughs> like crying, like heavily breathing, like whimpering, just... I was trying not to cry. <laughs> I was trying not it to cry. He was starting to tear up. And Yeah, I, I teared up very badly, because... Charles Xavier has always been my favorite uh, X-Men character. Because, see, as a kid, I didn't have very many friends, really. I barely had any friends. 
all I really had to do in my spare time was just watch movies. And when you watch a certain certain few movies enough times, you grow this kind of personal connection with some of the characters. Like, if they showed in... If they made Spider-Man 4 with Tobey Maguire and they killed Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man, I would feel something because I remember being a little kid and constantly re-watching the VHS tapes of Spider-Man 1 and 2 and always connecting with Peter Parker... So that would do something for me. And it's the same thing with Professor X. I've always loved Professor X, and I always used to watch X-Men and X-2. I didn't really watch X-3 a lot, because I still, at a young age, didn't really love X-Men 3. So, I, I've always liked Professor X, and he's always been my favorite X-Men character. So seeing him, just seeing him in the movie alone as he is was kind of heartbreaking because he's got Alzheimer's, he's talking to himself, he, he's having these seizures. And then he he's murdered, which it doesn't have the same emotional impact it would have had if he died naturally. I almost wish, and this was my theory, excuse me, before the movie came, even came out, I was theorizing that Charles Xavier would die in the movie. They kind of pointed at it a lot in the marketing, and so... But that did not keep it from having any less... That did not make it have any less impact. It still hurt when he died. Yeah, but... Shut up. It's, I, it's, not, it's ironic that you use the song Hurt. Um... But Logan, after you walk out of the movie, you're hurt. <laughs> um, but so I thought he was just going to die of natural causes, though. Or, even worse, Logan would be, like, forced to kill him. Instead, he is murdered by X-24, which is impactful, but not as impactful as I thought it would have been. Mm -hmm. But it still hurts so much when uh, Logan, he picks him up, takes him out to the truck, and he's trying to uh, compress the wound. He's trying to just keep him alive a little bit longer so he can maybe get him to a hospital or something. And then he's just mumbling to Logan. He says, Sunseeker, the name of the boat that they were going to buy and go off and live out on the ocean for the rest of their lives, maybe. And that, that, that broke me. I started to really tear up. And, and then he fought X-24, and yeah. Um, and then we get the death that really broke me. Logan himself dies at the end of the movie. He fights X-24, and X-24 just picks him up, impales him through this tree branch thing sticking out of a fallen tree. And that's, that's a wound that won't heal in time. Even if he had gotten off of it and was able to start healing, it would not have healed in time for it not to be fatal. Because of how, how many wounds he had like, while fighting anyway, too. N not even that, just because of how diminished his healing factor mm -hmm. is, he, too. Well, yeah, but he was, his healing factor was diminished in that he just fought and he got shot multiple times. Like, if he took any more of that, he would have well, died. Well, he, he took the medicine, which kind of helped. I know, but I'm talking about, like, after well, it he wore didn't, off. Well, he didn't really get shot very much after it wore off. He mainly just got stabbed and slashed. Yeah. Well, but, um... Same kind of thing. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, and then... So, Logan, he basically bleeds out to death right there while talking to his daughter slash clone Laura X-23 and that is what really got me when she starts crying and she says daddy and she's crying and it's like oh little girl is crying and, it, and Logan's dead and Professor X is dead and it hurts and I, I started crying <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> so um um 
So yeah, the movie ends off on a somber note, but also kind of a little bit of a hopeful one. The kids, they bury Logan, and they got like this wooden cross made out of sticks in front of his grave. Then Laura, she takes it, she just turns it on his side and turns it into an X. And then they all leave. And I love how that one kid had the Wolverine toy mm -hmm. with him, like, in the yellow spandex suit. Which, I just I just thought that was kind of a funny thing. But, um... And sad at the same time, because he had the toy, and he's now he's dead right in front of him. Yeah. Buried under the ground. I don't think he wants that toy anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Um... It leaves off on a kind of hopeful note that these kids might become the next X-Men, maybe. Yeah, but Brandon, Logan's dead. And Charles, Charles. dead. Oh, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I oh yeah, and, and X-24 slaughters a whole family. But Logan and Charles are dead. <laughs> yes, so, um, yeah. That, those were our uh, spoiler thoughts on Logan. Great movie. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, a must watch. Definitely a must watch. And a must bring a box of tissues <laughs> when you go see it. Cause bring you... comfort food. Because <laughs> you'll need it. I ate all my snacks before that part of the movie, so I had no comfort food. <laughs> I was just go sitting there foodless. Go home and have, like, soup. Go, go, home at, go home and like a hot soup. Go home and have ice cream. Just yeah, a whole like bucket a whole, of ice cream. Big, like, uh, like an industrial quart, sized bucket. A big quart of like ice cream. Just like half your body weight in ice cream. <laughs> Just, uh, <laughs> ah, Charles! <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you guys for watching this video. Uh, let me, let, let us know in the comments, uh, what you thought of the spoilers for Logan. Uh, definitely, uh, subscribe, leave a like if you liked, obviously, leave a dislike if you didn't like, but, either way, or, or matter. don't, or don't dislike, because that wouldn't be very nice. Um, yeah. Be nice, people. Be, uh, subscribe for more content, and, uh, we'll... Talk to you guys in the next video.